Welcome in, tits of all sizes, to Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling. I'm gonna give you a second one if you feel like deleting the first. And I'm James, it's Sweaty <laughs> Time Pro Wrestling. We don't have time for second takes because we Sean, don't. wow, I should. this should just be a 17 minute record technically. Oh, uh, probably. Do I sound weird or do I just need to turn myself up in headphones? Say blather, blather, blather three times slowly, please. Blather, blather, blather. I also haven't recorded anything in like two weeks, kind of. Okay, so it might be that. It might Yellow. just be your headphones. It sounds a yeah. little quiet. Oh, no. It, I, I think I'm good now. I turned okay. up my headphones for what? For nothing. And to clarify, I only wanted you to say blather, blather, blather because that is the only way I get off. And this is the only Lucha Underground podcast on the Marshland Media Empire where we watch season one of Lucha Underground, the Lucha. combination effort. Who are you, Australian or like the Hong Kong dubbers from Godzilla? Lucha Underground. I feel like I've, okay, so I ironically said Turlet the other day, and I'm afraid <laughs> I'm karmically paying for that. There's something that I was like, fuck, oh yeah, I'm becoming like an older man now because I'm just checking the weather every day, but it's mainly because, oh, I need to check this fucking air quality. It's so... So Canada got set on fire recently. I mean, they do every year, but it's finally affecting us because of, you know, climate change. God damn climate change. And it's not like when Rush sets this sky on fire with their sweet, sweet licks. Oh, man, I don't care what it is. It's new. And that's Hell all yeah. we can say from that movie, Sean. Wait, what movie are we? I was talking about Rush. Oh, no. Wait, what? At the end of SLC Punk, like the end end when it goes back and Bob like puts in Rush. Okay. And he's like, yeah. yeah, man, it doesn't care what it is. It's new. I recently said that on Height of Horror and then re got mad at you for always Wait, was... <laughs> referencing that one specific bit. Because I told Presley, oh, you haven't seen it, you should watch it. And I was like, wait. You hate this movie. Well, no, I love that movie, but I can't watch mm -hmm. it because of the end. And I said, wait, mm -hmm. do, you, do you have friends and family who have died from drugs and alcohol? There's a B, and she goes, yeah, my two brothers. And I was like, yeah, then maybe don't watch it. And she goes, well, you telling me not to watch it just makes me want to watch it more. Yeah, it's very... <laughs> I mean, it's a, it, 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 it's a great movie that... Deals with a very heavy subject matter in not the cleanest way possible. No. So yeah, watch at your own caution. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if your friend and if your friend tells you, "Hey, stop bringing that line up," stop bringing that line up. But he keeps forgetting, just like when you reference, like, "Oh yeah. no, Drago is a real dragon," and then he says, "Wait, no, no, he's not. Like, he's still a luchador." Not knowing many episodes previous, this co-host has said, "Drago is a real dragon, and here's why." Wait, you said that? The last episode, I brought up how Drago is now, like, he is a real dragon. You were like, "No, yes. he's like a luchador," and then I'm like, "Sean." You have in the past defended Drago as being a real dragon. Yeah, man. Why would you say Drago is just a luchador? He's clearly oh, a Jesus dragon. Christ. What is that? Is so <laughs> ignorant. And he's both. Like I think. Like I don't think. Like that. I think that's. My, if my takeaway is anything, it should be that the, he's both. No, no. In this episode, it is definitive. Vampiro yeah. during the match because we're on the subject. I will just cross this off right now. Vampiro says, man, Mill is beating the shit out of the building. And a dragon. Okay, Vampiro also says sexy stars should be our world heavyweight champion. Yes. And cut, cut to 2017. No. Not so much. Uh-uh. <laughs> I still think she deserves her second shot, okay? Uh, well, that's the new we'll bit see. I start doing yeah. it. Hey, you want to know what? I know the real <laughs> dominator here. Put sexy star in the ring with all these dogs at the no. playpen. Yes. No. Uh -huh. Sexy star will start being the, the officer at all these dog parks or at the park near me that is not a dog park and specifically says on the tennis field, no dogs allowed in here. But from like 5 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. It's just crawling with dogs. Yeah. Well, these dogs love tennis. The oh ball goes back and then it goes forth. 
Oh yeah, how are you gonna they, take that away from the they dog? They start humping it and it gets all. Did you know, uh, like dog and yes. cat penises are? You know, like those like frosty Ask machines me how or something. I am with dog penises. You know those machines that you have to like push up on the nozzle and then it like starts spewing out the liquid that you're about to drink. Oh, like wait. Like the like like the ones you get like at a McDonald's, like the fountain machines. Yeah, but like that, or just like a hamster suckling thing. You know, okay, that has sure. that little ball that goes up. That's what yeah. dog and cat penises are like. When you push, they need to be pushed up on, and then they just start leaking out the pee and the semen's. Oh hell yeah! Okay, uh-huh. now if you had this technology built into your body, this evolutionary technology, what are you doing with it? First night on the town, you got a ball inside of your penis that it pushes up and all this, and that's how things come out of? I would do that for, oh, specifically on my penis? Yeah, specifically for you, James. Oh, how, okay. you, how, how are you going to, how are you going to utilize this new evolutionary chain? If you are an X-Men, but your X-Men ability is that there is a ball inside of your penis that when it, when it pushes up, that's how the good stuff comes out. Well, for the cats and dogs, it's the entire penis. It gets pushed. That's why it's shaped oh, like that, okay. you know? I will say for this, for your X-Men ability, you only have the hamster ball, the, the, water, bo- the hamster water bottle ball. I would probably go into porn and okay. I'd, I'd jack off multiple times before the scene. So bah, when it bah, gets bah, bah. to the moment, I push up and it just sprays out. Like I'm building up enough semen to really have a, a healthy load for the porn industry. That is the correct answer. Congratulations. You have been awarded 25 points and a hearty well done. Mm-hmm. And speaking of well done, <laughs> these matches today on Lucha Underground. Indeed. We open up at the desk, as we always do, as Vampiro forewarns us the season is coming to a close. Yeah. As Ultima Lucha looms near. No! We gotta pay for that pay-per-view. We do, except I don't think we do. I'm pretty sure they put it on television. Yeah, it was just an episode, as they should have. I mean, it's actually a really neat idea. That Mm -hmm. It's a really neat idea that no one, as far as I know, has ever done since or again. If we learn anything from like the 80s and sort of how Vince McMahon took over the business as a whole. It's that he moved, he followed trends as far as television goes. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, one of those was like pay-per-view over closed circuit television, but the other was just doing television. And we're still, we still live in an age though of like, of pay-per-view, this kind of outdated, slightly outdated concept. Sean, I... I don't think closed circuit television for viewership was ever a thing. I forget what it's called then, but it was... Broadcast television? It's like the Betamax to pay-per-view. Oh, okay. I thought, Yeah, because closed circuit television is just like what? Security camera. I'll, yeah. I'll figure out what it is, but you keep going. All right. Well, Paul Blart's not here, but what is here is the confirmation that Johnny Mundo versus Alberto El Patron will happen at Lucha Underground. Johnny Mundo, why would you betray Alberto El Patron? Alberto El Patron, what the fuck are you doing in our company? We'll find that all out at Ultima Lucha. Meanwhile, in the ring, Sexy Star with Cape Wings awaits her opponent. Her opponent is going to be Superfly in his return match, Unmasked. After having betrayed Sexy Star at a match with Penta two weeks ago. But first, Vampira's got to sit down with Superfly and get that good old-fashioned interview. We got we to sit down interview with Vampiro and Superfly. Very tiny. <laughs> of an interview. Yeah, not really a whole lot get said. We all thought you were coming for the man who broke your arm, Pentagon Jr. Not the woman who took your mask. Superfly shoots back. I don't need to explain myself immediate eye roll from vampiro mm-hmm. sexy stole something from me so i wanted to steal something from her but unfortunately you vampiro that is jumped into the ring you saved her from having her arm broken thank you superfly i was wondering what you were doing in there vampiro reminds uh superfly that sexy didn't steal his mask she won it fair and square against him from a da- uh, dario cueto's orders she doesn't had to- she didn't have to take the match she could have walked away Dario has authorized a rematch. Do not interfere. Vampiro says, don't worry about me. But she already beat you. Took your mask. Put your focus on her. Superfly, I'm more focused than ever. 
Uh, he vows to put her in her place while rubbing his taped up elbow. Like really rubbing his elbow. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell if it was injured or he was just kind of like an elbow perv. Yeah. But he rubbed that elbow. And Superfly is such a fuckboy for this because <laughs> yes. Sexy Star was like, I don't want to take your mask. And he said, no, man, Dario set the stage for it. And it's like he kind of he just right before the bell rang, he quickly came out and said, oh, yeah, um, uh, you, you, you have to mm -hmm. take off your mask if you lose. Bye. Ugh. Yeah, no, D Dario threw, like spit in the face of tradition by making this uh, a, a mask versus, uh, versus mask match on the spot with mm -hmm. no heat between the two, right? They did. And Superfly was like, hey, I'll lick the boot. Yeah, no, like he was very, at the time before he was, before he was pure fuckboy energy and he was just wild fuckboy energy, he was lost in the sauce of honor. Mm -hmm. Of course I will take the match. I will never turn down a match. It's like, we're all anime heroes until we look down and we see that we're not wearing plot armor and our tiny little dick is hanging out. Uh, yeah. Super fly. They could have made this a pants Dario match where whoever they wins have. gets to pants <laughs> Dario and then the other person has to stand behind him so they can box push him or whatever it's called. Speaking of things that are called, Sean, you are correct. It is called closed circuit television, but would yeah. also be referred to as theater television. That's so weird, and I don't, I don't know, I don't know why I know this. Like, I don't think that has been a, a thing since the early '80s. It went through to 1990 when it was replaced by pay per view. You ever find out you'd know something that literally not even bar trivia would ever ask you because nobody cares? Oh, there was once when we went, like, Nicole's stepfather talked Nicole and I up to all the bar trivia people. It was like, oh, oh yeah, no. they're so good. We're going to win when they show up and was so excited we showed up. And it oh. just so happened for this night. It was like... A few days before Christmas, so it, it was very cozy in there, and it the theme was Christmas movies, and Nicole and I annihilated so hard, <laughs> and one of the things, this man thought no one was going to get this, and it was, what movie is about a child trying to find an 8-bit game system for Christmas and uh, uh, try... The answer, of course. Yes. Being uh, Stephen Sondheim's Assassins starring Neil Patrick Harris. Okay, you're close. It is starring Neil Patrick Harris. I forget the name of the movie. I was like, well, it's weird that he said 8-bit, but yeah, it's 8-bit Christmas. Like, it can't be anything else. And normally, yeah. when no one gets the question right, he'll say, oh, well, we're going to skip that one. I have a replacement for that. No one besides us got that. So it bumped us up so far. And he's like, how do you know that? I was like, it's a fantastic movie. It went straight to streaming. And he's like, oh, that's why no one knows it. And I was like, no, man, it's good. Everyone should watch it. Yeah, that, I mean, that's it, was, it seemed like it only went straight to streaming because of how the market was at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why. It was 2020 Christmas or 2021 Christmas, so yeah. Yeah, like, that's, like it seemed like... I, I, I was, it took me a minute to be like, yeah, that movie had like a huge marketing budget, it mm -hmm. seemed, and mm -hmm. then disappeared, and I wonder why. And then you're like, 2020, 2021, and I'm like, oh, right, we all... We all, we all almost died. That's true. It's so good, guys. Watch 8-Bit Christmas. And then the the ones that, like, everyone knew, Nicole and I didn't know, like Family Christmas Vacation. Ugh, man, oh, yeah. those movies suck. I agree, except for Christmas. I like Christmas Vacation a lot. I think every scene that the main man, Clark Griswold, isn't in is fantastic. Every scene he is in, I'm like, why do his family stay with him? There needs to be a yeah. new one where this man has been excommunicated and no one talks about him. <laughs> I agree. Let's excommunicate Chevy Chase while watching Sexy Star vs. Superfly. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, super, like Superfly has the mask off. He has a eye tattoo. I don't know. He's all edgy now. And they're both wearing like gray and silver. And they're both so edgy. These they're not friends anymore. And it hurts. It hurts. And the match is all right. Superfly's back handspring elbow set up for a lot of heat while overpowering sexy. It's a lot of heat from Superfly in this match. Vampiro and Stryker discuss the adversities Sexy Star has overcome and overcomes weekly to fight in the temple. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, and the, uh, the and like. It's, they bring up an interesting sort of, like, dichotomy 
of the weight as well as the support she receives from all the faithful looking up to her. Yeah. Like, do they get, do they empower her or do they add pressure for her to live up to? Yeah. And like, what, what is this line? uh, What is this line we walk for those who wish to be seen in the public eye? And this is a fucking wrestling show. This question is way too deep for a wrestling. I love it. It's, I'm, so also, good. Vampiro during this talking about the importance of the mask, just with Jim Carrey, of course, he's yeah. just saying like, <laughs> oh, my God, Dark Horse. They were just an indie. They didn't have the Rob Layfield that, you know, Image had. No. Uh, <laughs> they... Uh, <laughs> Somebody stop you. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. His historian nature is just, this is when you see Vampiro, like, he's not the buffoon that he makes himself out to be. He's just, like, so good. And I don't know if he had been commentating in this capacity before Lucha Underground, and I'm guessing he hadn't because he regularly thanks Matt Stryker for like, hey, thank you for this year of like showing me the ropes of doing this right here. Mm -hmm. And even in that documentary, he thanks Matt Stryker for his whole career resurgence. Hell yeah. Because Matt Stryker wrestled for WWE, kind of quickly transitioned into a commentary role Mm -hmm. where I don't think, yeah, I don't think Vampiro ever did commentary for television at least. Yeah. Maybe a gathering of the Juggalos. Maybe a few gatherings, but I feel like he was usually, he wasn't usually on commentary. He was usually in the, in the ring somewhere. And they're great too. I, I know we had some rough spots and there were some wrestling in 2014 moments, you know, earlier in the season, but they are a phenomenal commentary team. Yeah. They have grown so much in this past year. I'm, I'm very I would like to see how they grow. And guys, please show a friend. We're we're coming down to the home stretch right now. We need more listeners. Yeah. And Superfly needs to not get back body dropped over the top rope, but he does. Uh-huh. Lands on the outside. Sexy Star capitalizes with a quote, extremely unorthodox and dangerous crossbody from the top to the outside. Just one of those moments. It looks like she didn't get enough push off while jumping off of the turnbuckle. And like, it's a very scary fall. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, she's fine. But like, it didn't look great. Around this time, someone screams something at, from the crowd, screams something at Superfly. And it sounded like, take off his hair grease. I mean... I wouldn't say his hair was not greasy. So I I don't know what's up with that. Also (laughs) around this time, out of the corner of my eye, there's a piece of paper. So we have a mattress up against the wall because it's a spare mattress. We don't know anywhere to put it. It also is good for sound dampening. But there's a mattress Mm -hmm. up against the wall and there are comic book boxes behind it. All of a sudden, uh, there's this piece of paper near the mattress. So, like, it's in shadow. I see it moving. I'm like, what? And I'm like, oh, that must have just been my eyes playing tricks on me. Then I see it move again. I'm like, what? And I'm like, no, no. And then when I'm looking at it, it violently moves. I'm like, "Ah!" I think there's, like, a huge bug or something back there until I see this white little paw start hampering at it. And I'm like, oh, that's just butter behind the mattress where she sleeps. Butter. So I probably missed some, some, (laughs) some stuff during this match <laughs> it's hard to say and especially if what happened at triple a mania which is still like up for de- i don't want to say debate it's still refuted by sexy star you know she still says she didn't do anything wrong she questions if rosemary even got hurt uh, I'm, I'm just gonna let that happen and say and use the word allegedly a lot i guess mm-hmm. but it might be worth it to watch adorable butters playing with their adorable paws, as opposed to watching Sexy Star, who may have gotten there. I mean, she's just starting to wrestle on television regularly. Mm-hmm. I want to give her... It's just it's a shame where her career ends up. Yeah. Like, this is the match we talked... I You know, I, men- I mentioned offhand. But, like, yeah, like, Vampiro wants to see the title get put on Sexy Star. Yes. And in t- 2014, 2015... I might agree with that. He says specifically, there's a lot more from Sexy Star to come. I'm hoping for at least. Yeah, like she's 
but I mean, and we've seen it this whole season. She's very pushed. She's very built up. She's she's a big deal here. Mm-hmm. On the stuff of like maybe she goes a little too hard. You see that because yeah. she starts getting a little. I don't know if it's on purpose, but she starts getting frustrated and going really hard against Superfly. Maybe that's in storyline. Maybe that was all planned out. But it seems like, oh, I keep getting bullied. I'm going to fucking tear you up. That's how I was with bullies. Hey, you start picking on me. I'm going to start windmill punching you until you submit. Why won't you submit? <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a concern and obviously that is the reason you know, she still wrestles independently she's taken gigs but certainly is, her career is not where it was at this time or in 2017 mm-hmm. like and there is something there was uh uh you know there there is always debate of of strong style uh you know what really just hit me versus not but that's still needs to be consented to in the ring yeah but also i i do want to give her credit too because the cross body was bad she usually i feel like in every match we've seen this season has at least one spot where you see her throw a kick or a punt and you're like and some of that is uh you know the the curse of foresight and you're like i don't know did you clear that that you were just gonna kick someone in the tooth as hard as you can yeah and she in getting aggressive vampiro knows what's up because uh he says she's going to stomp a mud hole on his ass. What? Yeah, but like also I want to I want to give her the shout out for the tor- after that really s- scary crossbody, the one that didn't look so great. She does that she hits this running tornado DDT, looks phenomenal. She gets back in the ring, hits another crossbody, looks perfect. Mm-hmm. Like I think like it was some level of frustration and just this really like, and it happens to everyone. If it didn't happen to Sexy Star, would I harp on this bad crossbody as much? I don't know. But it did, and I did. I thought this match was fantastic. Again, one, I do watch most of this at 1.3 speed. So these mm-hmm. mess ups could just be like, oh, if if it were slower, I would notice it. Maybe not. But Butter was being a little cutie and scaring me. However, yeah. I, I don't know wrestling as well as you do. So I'm like, oh, well, that unless it's like clear and present, like, oh, wow, that mm-hmm. fucked up. I just thought both of them were doing so well in this match. And it's a 10 out of 10. Hell yeah. There you go. Uh, at the finish, Superfly cuts off Sexy with a low kick. Powerbomb holds on to it. Second sit out powerbomb. One, two, three, six minutes, 35 seconds. Post match, the beat down. Uh, real quick, Superfly's pants do not hold sweat well because you can see his <laughs> ass crack starting to sweat. As as he is beating his former friend and tag team partner and ripping at her mask, the ass crack, it do sweat. Ooh. In the ring again, Melissa Santos, our ring announcer, calls down Pentagon Jr. Oh, hold on. We're missing a real big thing because, hey, TikTok, you love Drago. So whenever this fucker is on screen, we need to mention it. He's just doing dubstep nunchuck training. It's great. <laughs> I was going to say drag step, but then I was like, well, no, that's just seems like dubstep drag performers would go to. So I- Yeah, which sounds cool as Yes, hell. absolutely. Hey, guys, yeah. I want to see Drago and Drag. So then it's mm-hmm. like capital D-R-A-G-O, like the O is mm. lowercase, Drago. Like I'm a I'm a white man from Minnesota. Hey, look at that Drago <laughs> over there. And then it, it sounds like a slur, though. So let's just say Drago always. Yeah, it sounds great. <laughs> yes, uh, but I want to see him in drag doing nunchuck movements to dubstep. I will say, hell of a way to cut to commercial. I want to see him kiki in the ring. <laughs> After we come back from that commercial with the Drago nunchuck tease, Melissa Santos is announcing Pentagon Jr., who is a creepy bastard, suddenly takes the mic out of her hands. 
in this weird, and if you've never seen Penta wrestle for whatever reason, first of all, I'd say, what the heck, you should. Uh, but he has, he has very specific movements. Like, I don't know, it's almost, he's, it's like he's walking on a tightrope wire of, like, bad intentions all the time. Like, that's how I would describe his physicality. The way he like very very specifically places his arms when he walks or his legs, he almost does a zani walk too. If anyone's very familiar with Commedia dell'arte, I have such specific interest, James. It's all <sighs> pro wrestling and Renaissance Italian improvised theater. Like you, you know some thi- <laughs> you know the dumbest <laughs> shit about acting, but when it comes to like broad scopes that you should know about that. I, for some reason, do. You're like, I'm very confused. I have no idea. What's up with that? What's a split diopter? I I think you made that word up just now. No, I didn't. What? That's crazy. Watch a De Palma film. You'll know what it is. How about about you De Palma these nuts? It's Pentagon, baby. Pentagon's in the ring, takes the microphone. A reminder of when he tried to sacrifice Melissa DeSantos' arm. Uh, Melissa Santos' arm. She leaves, freaked out. Penta calls out Dario Cueto. He is not interested in winning simple gold medallions to offer his master. He wants to show everyone that he is the only luchador with zero miedo uh, to destroy the man who took away my greatest sacrifice. You, vampiro. No. What? Oh, no, the call out is real. Pentagon wants Vampiro after after taking away uh, Sexy Storm's R, arm. Sorry, there's a lot of ARs and I got lost. After taking away Sexy Star's arm from the sacrifice of Pentagon Jr., Pentagon demands repayment and that repayment will come from a match with Vampiro. Uh, they shove each other. They don't do anything else. I don't think Vampiro is cleared yet. I hope he has already been cleared before Pentagon called out for this match. And they have to take a commercial break for Stryker to go through his calming rituals to calm down Vampiro after Pentagon leaves. I imagine those those rituals are tummy rubs and soothing stories of Johnny Wallaby, a wallaby who works at a massage therapist. I want to comment on something. Please. The crowd is so fucking hyped for Pentagon. They're like, yeah, take a sacrifice someone to our master. But once Vampiro steps up and unbuttons his shirt, the crowd, the quickest I have ever seen someone turn on someone they loved so much. People get the inkling of truly a rock star of lucha libre wrestling is a there's an inkling that he could wrestle again they're like vampiro vampiro and the fact like think of pentagon jr who he's a legacy correct no oh he's not the character is the performer is not oh okay i was me i was meaning the performer but clearly he they him and his brother started wrestling very young right yeah that is part of the culture that's one of the interesting things about them is that they are not a legacy and they've come as far they just worked really hard so like it's one it's one of those kind of things where it's really easy if you're kind of a dork about it and you know that about them they're yeah. like, oh, he keeps sacrificing arms and fruit. Eats. We don't have health insurance. Pentagon, stop. But also you have a very admirable work ethic. And from all accounts, you are lovely to be around. So I bring that up because Vampiro is like a sting or a mm-hmm. like a Randy, a macho man, savage like these. He is a rock star to probably him like the, he he's a little bit older than us, Pentagon. So he would have been watching wrestling in 95 and plus. So oh, yeah. him seeing Vampiro and like, holy shit, I'm going to wrestle with Vampiro. This would be like, Sean, if you were to all of a sudden get an acting gig with Francesco Ardrenini. Okay, I want to be very clear uh, and transparent to our listeners. You are holding the phone up and your notes up to your face to block your own microphone. So whoever that was, is, it, is, you, is, is a note you bothered to write down? No, I quickly got this because you okay. brought up Comedy dell'arte. So I was like, who's a famous person in the 16th century who did this? 
and now I've been I've been shown a fraud. You no. better believe it. My entire wall. Oh, no, everything is crumbling around me. Yep. Uh, <laughs> is that wait, is that the, is that the author behind the Commedia dell'arte book, or is that just some guy? That's just some guy. I can right. press on his name. He's Please a. Don't. He, we he have is an so actor much more who mainly did Commedia dell'arte. Wonderful. He uh, was Captain Fright. It is a big deal. I gotta look up Captain Fright. That name kicks ass. I'm assuming a Capitano. I don't know. That name kicks ass though. Um, yeah, yeah. And yet, to you, uh, but to your point, it like that. That is very. That's actually something I didn't stop to think about. That is phenomenally cool. Yeah. And like and exciting. Yeah. To see, but it's also to see uh, to see them trust Pentagon with a match as big as Vampiro. Mm-hmm. You know, this is he's. It's not 2017 Vampiro. But his body, he, there's this, there, uh, the adage of the bump card, like you have in your lifetime, you have a card and you, every time you take a bump or fall in the ring, uh, you kind of get your, a hole punched mm-hmm. and that you only have so many holes on the card. That is to say, Vampiro's bump card has been pretty well filled up. Yeah. And these goddamn CEOs and Federation executives are ready to punch those holes and fuck them as many times as they can. According to Vampiro, I do wonder how much of that. So in the documentary I watched, uh, which, again, we'll recommend because it's amazing and it's such a love, a, a loving take and lovely look at Vampiro, the person, the fall and rise of Vampiro available for free on YouTube. I questioned how much of that is Vampiro just like not wanting to take full responsibility because it hurts. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, it totally does. And people do keep offering him money. But there is that segment with Karrion Cross backstage who gives him a real nasty suplex. And Karrion Cross being like, I didn't think we should do the suplex. Vampiro came up to me and very explicitly said, give me your finishing suplex. I can take it. Yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of it, there is, and it, I think the one knock on it, and it's really probably just YouTube or whoever the distributors are or the editors, is that there is someone who speaks in Spanish and we don't get subtitles for him. And it's so frustrating because he probably has the most insight into mm-hmm. Vampiro's career in the in AAA. It's baffling that this, that this documentary was like, oh yeah, everyone is bilingual watching this. Yeah, which like, I get it. I need to read more documentary. You're right. But now is not the time to remind me of how little I have educated myself in my early 30s, late 20s. You pick up a book and you're like, I'm going to learn Spanish. So let me just pick up. Hey, they say read books, you know, Comedia dell'arte. I was literally going to say it. Just it, They keep turning into Comedia dell'arte books. And no one needs to know about Comedia dell'arte. And then you find out it's the Italian version. And you're like, damn it. I know Italian. I didn't need that. That's something James would want. But then I go see this Super Mario Brothers movie and it's all good, baby, baby. You're like, yes, I understand. <laughs> I understand Mario's <laughs> family and no one else. Finally. <laughs> Next year, I'll understand Sonic the Hedgehog. But for now, we got to get into this four way for the medallion. Ooh. Aerostar, Marty the Moth, Mac, and Cage. And right out in the beginning, Mac and Cage go at it. And then Marty and Aerostar kind of like side hug and they're like, ha, they're cheesing at these two battling. And then Aerostar is mm. like, yeah, I'm I'm going to defeat you, Marty. And then just I, slams him. It's very it's a very it's a very funny reminder because I think it was yeah, it was Marty and Puma where like Marty did get some offense in by being a creepy little trickster. Mm -hmm. Arrow does not fall for it. And a reminder of the history between Cage and Mac, Cage backstage jumped Mac, replaced him as as Big Rick's partner and cousin, I presume. So Cage (laughs) has stolen the cousinhood away from Mac. It's, It's a big deal. A lot of heat. They fucking hate each other. And they're just big beefy men it's Ooh. cool it's, if you're into hoss fights hoss referring to larger wrestlers throwing heavy str- like heavy hits uh when you were talking about replacing him as a family ooh, sounds like a sturdy branch on that family tree babe hey hey <laughs> i'm not sure what that's a pun in re- reference to but i liked it i mean uh, it, 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 they're both very giant men so it sounds it like be... a sturdy branch 
There's a couple of trunks for branches up in the sky, if you know what I mean. Imagine being on your family tree and someone, you see Cage crawl up to it and just push one of your cousins off. It says, <laughs> I'm here now, okay? It is my greatest fear. I wake up in cold sweats, three in the morning, dialing my cousins. Has a man named Brian Cage come to your home? Excuse if me? so, lock the door. I believe you mean a machine named Brian Cage. I am sorry. That is true. Oh, gosh. He's at my window. He's, I gotta go. Oh, you're the cut. Hey. If oh, you, I'm the cut. Yeah. If you haven't seen him on your tree, guess what? You're the one going down. Oh, no. <laughs> He's dragging up a kennel for you that has walls pushing out. <laughs> it's on right now. All right. All right. All right. He has an extension cord to a generator at the base of the tree. No. <laughs> and it's I in a little red be, wagon. I do not want to be dominated on the go. <laughs> it's very dangerous. He puts you in that kennel and he lazily just bungee cables you to the branch. And he's like, hey, when that cable gives out, it gives out. Oh, man. And it's so hard to see him move lazily because we've all seen how much he can move when he's excited and motivated. Mm -hmm. He's this match, by the I love this match. I oh, think this yeah. is a very, this is a great match. Fantastic. Now, and I love watching Cage. I love watching Willie Mack. Uh, Willie yes. Mack wasn't in the big, he's so good. So good. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy. He's kind of getting back on TV, but kind of not. He's on Ring of Honor, which is. Like, it's only a streaming service. It's not on television at all right mm -hmm. now, which is kind of cool. It's a wrestling show that has no commercial breaks. So, like, it, the matches flow very specifically. But, like, man, Willie Mac is so good. Mac gets German suplexed onto his spine, but rolls through, land on his feet. Strong fighting spirit. Or, as Matt Stryker would say, that's a strong fighting spirit, you laddie. Ha ta 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 ta. I don't know why Fighting Spirit was so Scottish when it came out of Matt Stryker's mouth, but he made a choice, and we are thankful to him for that. Yeah, and you made the choice to be Irish while trying to be Scottish. Huh? What? I don't remember. I can't recall. I love those Scottish leprechauns, guys. <laughs> Listen, you, can I tell you about Commedia dell'arte? Uh, are you familiar with the lovers and how they transcend modern day comedies? I was going to bring up, oh man, watching these four in the ring, it's like the players in Comedy dell'arte. I mean, you could argue that uh, Hisako, yes, I, for I forget her name, uh, the ghost from the ring. The go Oh, uh, Sadako is from the ring Japanese, and then Samara, I think, is from the American one. Okay, Sadako, you could argue, is a type of pantalone, maybe even a, an Isabella in the uh, classic Commedia dell'arte tropes. And if you want to hear more about that, subscribe to my masterclass, Shit No One Cares About But Goose Seems to Know A Lot Of, on masterclass.net. Oh, and I wouldn't mind showing Sadako my pantalones. Vampiro! <laughs> also, everyone, she is an adult. If you watch Ring Zero, she is in college. And she's in the theater. She goes off and is she, oh my God, she is a theater bug. Oh my gosh. You think me and Sadako can do Commedia dell'arte 2 prof together? I think so. You should watch the Ring, Ring 2, and then Ring Zero, Happy Birthday. And then when she crawls out of the screen to attack me, I'll be like, oh, hey, have you ever read... Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, and then she'll cock in, uh, her neck at me like, I'm a murderer, but I'm interested. And I'll be like, it's the theater of the absurd, but before absurd became bastardized to mean anything silly, it really speaks onto, uh, 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 onto aggressive positivity in the face of hopelessness. And then she'll be like, why do you sound like Jiminy Glick? And I'll be like, I gotta go. She crawls from the TV and then tags you out and she says, as you're like holding a baby and she says, oh man, this cat got real big. Oh, we're doing blind freestyle. We're doing short form games. Co co comedy sports. Look, look us up. It's me and Zanako. Uh-huh. Two man <laughs> improv. Or I guess one man, one ghost improv. We are the Ryan Styles, Colin Mockery 
of paranormal horrid por- paranormal goof em ups of yokai comedy. Yeah. Yo-kai Holy comedy. shit, that's, that's really actually, good. That sounds good. That's a good plan, actually. Sean, Everyone... <laughs> you and I need to do yokai comedy. James, I think we should do some yokai comedy. All right, you talk about this wrestling match. I'm going to see if that's trademarked yet. Vampiro does not trust Marty the Moth. A reminder, Marty the Moth debuted by hanging outside the temple, waiting for someone to open the door, and then being really creepy about it. Vampiro reminds us all he's a creepy stalker who's too weird to be trusted. Big Tope by Marty to Cage and Matt. Marty landing on Cage and Mac elicits Marty's Aztec pride, which Vampiro mishears as Aztec pie, which I know we have too many good ideas this episode, but we should also make Aztec pie. Like just little, like little pie, like little, like little hostess pies. Yummy, yummy. But they're Lucha Underground, so it's like a little pie, and then you have Prince Puma's face on it. Or you eat the pie, and then you bite down, and then you pull, you like, you break it open, and there's a prize inside. It's a miniature Conan's cane. Mm-hmm. Oh, hell yeah. Right? I like that. Vamp also said that he can profile weirdos. I'm not sure if you brought that up. And I'm like, yeah, he spent a lot of time with <laughs> Juggalos at the gathering. Yeah, he's also, he is also an unequivocal weird. We watched him fuck mannequins. Yeah, we watched him hang out with like an, an Ewok light. He hung out with an Ewok light, fucked mannequins, and saved the world from alien? Question mark? I don't think it was clear. All well on probably Quaaludes. <laughs> yeah. Or on <laughs> Ambient. Best movie of all time. Oh, and when Vampiro <laughs> was like distraught, he wasn't talking and Stryker's like, hey man, it's totally understandable why you're like this after that beef with with uh, Zero Merdo, dude. And yeah. he's like, yeah, but, but we're on TV, man. I need to be professional. <laughs> True. And, and and this is your uh, weekly reminder that Vampiro records this show twice mm-hmm. in Spanish and English. So like he Vampiro, you're more you're more professional than us all. And we wish you the best of health. Aerostar works the rope to sent on Mark and Marty. Mac and Marty. There is no there. There is no Mark in this match. I'm the Mark marking out for this awesome wrestling Mac and Marty, uh, Cage back in, catches a springboarding arrow star, bicep curls this man, and then overhead hurling his ass onto the outside. Cage, Mac, arrow star, everyone gets some shine, uh, except for Marty, who is a creepy little bastard. Mac ends up pinning arrow star, but Marty breaks it up. He starts working. Mac won't be pinned. Cage picks his spot. They call him the intelligent machine, like in this instance, because he is very much like following the flow of the match, trying to pick the exact moment to come in and be a big fucking wrecking ball. Mm -hmm. He is the Miley Cyrus of muscle-bound meat mountains. Yeah, they said cage knockouts. He doesn't count out, which is unlike the vice versa of the Hugginator, which got the the confusion there. People Mm -hmm. are thinking we knock them out, don't count them out. No, it's just like... Goes for a mm-hmm. little bit, then stops. We're not trying to harm the dogs, just their no. sensibility and psyche. Mm-hmm. And please stop sending us those letters. We're fine. I don't even know. I don't even know what. Well, there is a there. There is some form of uh, federal government branch that deals with the crimes we have committed to these dogs. But I don't know who they are because I'm too busy studying Commedia dell'arte. And also, we haven't. Are the consumers you have. have the consumers you have. have James, the Marshland monster himself, has done all this. Okay, just I be- stand corrected. Just because VHS head cleaner can also loosen up your muscles for maybe your first anal experience, that doesn't mean, (laughs) oh, VCRs are promoting anal sex. No, it's just like a byproduct of that. I'll have you I'll have, you know, my twenty five hundred dollar out of court settlement back in 2007 would say differently. That's one for Sean, zero for the VCR industry. Hell yeah, dude. You're why they went out of business. Absolutely. I don't know if you touched on this, but 
Matt Stryker says, hey, you know, Marty, he claims he has Aztec blood. It's not DNA verified. And Vero, Vampiro, Vero says, Vampiro <laughs> says he's missing a gene, should be wearing a helmet. And Matt Stryker's like, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, this is, <laughs> I mean, and we even mentioned it earlier, as good as this commentary team is, they, they do they they'll run into the wrestling is just socially 10 years behind everything else uh-huh this is a a great example of one of those moments yeah jesus vampiro it's like when you watch Ugh. like mid or early 2000s simpsons and like the simpsons aren't mm. known for being offensive but they just like call someone gay and you're like oh me-, like you laugh because it's like i can't believe people did that back in the day and for the simpsons yeah. it's generally like hey it's just like weird humor and then they do that it's like wowzers but they have a very funny bit where they pass Mole Man in the car and Lisa says, hey, you're gay for Mole Man. And then Bart says, no, you're gay for Mole Man. And they go back and forth. And then as they leave, Mole Man goes, no one's gay for Mole Man. (laughs) If you're gay for Mole Man, sound off. Let Mole Man know. (laughs) And sound with Mole Man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark drag, uh, Mac drags. There's no Mark. Why do I keep saying Mark? <laughs> I can't read. Mac drags cage to the outside. This was disgusting. Exploder suplex onto the apron. Cage like kind of rolls off the apron onto the ground. Mac climbs the top rope. Cage is not in the ring. He is on the ground on the outside of the ring. A terrible place to frog splash, unless you're Willie Mac, who doesn't give a fuck, and frog splashes him, top rope, to the floor. Everyone's dead. Why did they do this? During this, if you pay attention to Marty the Moth, because... His face. You were paying attention to Marty the Moth during this spot. Well, during the <laughs> the him slamming him on the apron, you see Marty's face. I'm hoping in character is like, oh fuck, I made a mistake. I should not be here. This is fucked. This was such a bad idea. I could I could have been an accountant. My mom has some great ties with a solid firm. What am I doing here? I could have been an Aztec priestess. He should have been. Instead, he is in the ring. Aerostar tightrope walks into his Frankensteiner. Springboard splash. Spudnik down. Aerostar pins Marty. Nine minutes and ten seconds. Hell yeah! Uh, Then we cut to some twangy scumbag bluegrass over the odd thruple working out. This is some sitcom ass promo and I want more of this. This entire thing is an episode of Los Luchadores. It's very good. Ivelisse is sparring with Son of Havoc while Angelico is doing long boy leg workout shit? Question mark? Yeah. She gets she starts getting real punchy after Son of Havoc hits her too hard. Uh she's like, "Help, oh, starts hitting him back. Don't you fuck with me. I swear to God." When Katarina walks in, remarks that God can't help you. Sooner or later, death will come to all three of you. I was going to say, and soon I'm about to come because wowie zowie. She gets like, she gets like, Katarina gets real close to Ivelisse's mouth. Like, real close. I hope this like, is, f- I mean, I don't want them to lose, especially to these three fuckboys we're about to see, but... Uh, fuck boys because yeah. they're like nondescript skeleton men. <laughs> but yeah, real quick, the goons come in for uh, Mil Muertes and Katarina's goons come in. They lay them out. Mill leaves. Whatever. Let's talk about how close Katarina Ivelisse got again. Yes, because I hope it's foreshadowing a kiss of death on them. And oh my fuck god, yeah. oh my it god, was so s- steamy. I will say I'm fucking. St- me like I man how are you gonna have it oh oh, think of Jesus it was very cool it was fucking hot it was awesome don't think of Jesus you'll get aroused again ah damn it 
Because he's ripped, guys. No, I need no. I need to think of Jesus so that I can actually ejaculate and get rid of this stupid boner. Oh, okay. I can't come without Jesus. That's your new That's bit my- is saying you can't come without a specific thing, which makes yeah. me think, are you having trouble recently? <laughs> 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 nah, dude, I keep a I keep a crucifix over my bed all the time. You're like, what taboo thing do I need to do? Or not even taboo, just like <laughs> what thing no one else experiences do I need to do to really get going? Or just what is the thing? Now it's gonna be what is the thing that literally everyone does every day? Like, I can't come unless I make my grocery list before I go to the store. I mean, someone is doing that every, like, someone out there every day is doing that, but everyone doesn't go to the grocery store every day. That's true. Uh, I can't come unless I whisper prayers to my dead father and uh, live a life that he is proud of, but that I, more importantly, I am proud of for him. That's the only way I can come. Or for you, because this is, like, uh, uncategoristically th- You don't normally do this would be, oh, I can't come unless I get out of bed when my alarm goes off. (laughs) How fucking dare you? (laughs) I got got. And we're about to get got into our main event for the evening for the number one contender uh, to the championship at Ultima Lucha. Drago versus Mil Boertes. Can I uh, explain my thoughts on this? So Drago's out in the ring and I'm like, I started literally writing down, I don't care whoever, never mind, Hernandez showed up. Because I was going to say, I don't care who wins because whoever does win. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then like once Hernandez left, I was like, oh, okay, it's still going on as planned. I don't care if Emil or Drago wins. Whoever does, they are beating Puma. I'm calling it right now. Puma is losing his title at Ultima Lucha. Now, I wanted to ask you specifically before we get into it, because I know you're a big Mill fan uh-huh. from, the, from like episode up one. I feel like Mill is like is is Mill your is is your number one? I think Mill and Drago like this was a perfect match. I d- I did not care who won. Yeah, because my other question is, who do you prefer? Your love of Mill or your love of clicks and views uh-huh. for any time Drago shows up in our TikToks. <laughs> for real, like yeah. out of all my videos, it has like every day gets one new like just it's a Drago match of quick hits. He ha- He's looking like a dragon and it just like has cool. like 600 views and it just keeps climbing. So mm. I love him. But Mill also two thumbs up. He's the best. Drago's the best. Like for real, aside yeah. from people's love of him, I think those are my favorites right now. There is something I like to impress this to like if you go to it, if you go to a show and maybe you're newer Or you're on the more like, I watched it when I was a kid. I don't really keep up. But it's the idea of you're allowed. There are no rules for being a fan. There are rules of just being a decent human being. Mm -hmm. Sure. But as far as like, I remember seeing someone and they kind of be like, I don't know who to cheer for and who to boo. But like not in a fun way, like in a, I'm actually very concerned. I don't know who to cheer for and who to boo. And it's, it's strange because you could tell, I think that like they were having a good time and I just want to, I just want to like give them a warm glass of milk, give them some tummy rubs and be like, you can do both. It's actually totally, it's really fun when you're caught up, when you're so caught up in a match and you just end up cheering for both guys. Cause you fucking love both of mm-hmm. them. Was the match like, you were like, wait, wait, you don't know who to cheer for? Not officer Cabana. Never officer Cabana. <laughs> Cold Cabana all goddamn day. Officer Cabana, what a piece of shit with some awkwardly dated written jokes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we, I think that we watched that match from 20... I think that was 2012, which in wrestling is 1973. In wrestling years. 2012 in wrestling years is 1973. Shouts out to Officer Cabana at the Gathering of the Juggalos, though. Surprisingly, uh, 1973 was actually... 2001, because that's when that movie came out. Ah, oh shit. Stanley Kubrick, fuck you. Actually, I don't know when that movie came out. I still like, that's, I, I haven't seen that movie. There's a lot of Stanley Kubrick movies. I think we've talked about this before. They're bad. I had a real bad panic attack during a screening of um, Clockwork Orange. We don't like The Shining. 
I do not like The Shining, but I haven't seen 2001. So my Stanley Kubrick fuck you does not apply to 2001, but I stand by it. Fuck you, Stanley Kubrick. He belittled the monkeys on set so bad until they broke. Wait. No, I'm just saying like that's why he did with it with Shelley Duvall. Oh, I was going to say, because are you familiar with the monkeys movie Head? What? So you remember? Oh, the monkeys, the band. I thought you were talking about the movie, the monkeys, the band or the I thought you were talking about the monkeys, the band. No, I'm talking in 2001, the obelisk coming down and they start going. Have you ever seen the movie Head, though? No, it's the movie where they break the monkeys. And it's amazing. Just a minor shout out to the movie head. Do you mean like break them as in like, oh, they're famous now or break them as in like, oh, well, we need to stop doing this. No, like I think they broke their spirits. Okay, all right. It's awesome. (laughs) Drago is in the ring. Yep. But uh, to get back to her, yeah, Hernandez is here too, guys. (laughs) Hernandez drums him before the bell. Beautifully shiny shirt. Brutal belt just fucking belts the shit out of poor Drago. Except he's a dragon. He doesn't feel a thing. That's for true. Because that referee, Marty Elias, does need to confirm with Drago that he can compete, who can barely stand up. Uh, But Drago's not giving away his title shot and motions for Melissa Santos to announce Mil Muertes. He's so cool, both of them. A clash of darkness. Will there be light? I don't know. Mill's power is overwhelming, <gasps> minimizing distance and bullying Drago. Yeah. A, lo- a lot of this match is bullying Drago. And just he has perfected the Michael Myers sit up. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I mean, a lot of like old heads would be like The Undertaker. Mm, the Undertaker does the Michael Myers sit up. And to that, I'll say, yeah, but he has some terrible taste in shirts. And I would say Frank Castle perfected that. You know what? Absolutely. Frank Castle perfected that and also does not ironically wear Punisher skulls or misinformedly wears Punisher skulls. Frank Castle would murder a corrupt cop. Wait, no, I'm... Did I accidentally say... I thought Frank Castle is the actor who played the shape in Halloween 2. Oh, Halloween I, as well. Let me double check that. Maybe. I know Frank Castle is also the name of the Punisher. Yes. Also, yokai comedy. No one's doing it. We got to. Let's fucking go. All right. I need to look up what the word yokai means. Just, uh, it's ghosts. Oh, okay. Cool. I was like, I got really excited by the name. Did not know what it was. I'll be totally honest. Which is how I, th- I feel like I got most projects I kind of end up doing. That's how they start. I don't know what they are, but I get real excited. Case in point, shuffling the deck. Hey, uh, I'm a, it's, I'm not juggalo enough for the juggalos, but I'm too juggalo for the modern day world. Where do I, where do I live after shuffling the deck? It's Nick Castle. I apologize. Nick Castle. Okay. Also a great setup. I mean, Uh shout out to Frank, to Punisher that he's got great core strength. Yeah. Nick Castle, Frank Castle, Mil Muertes. All better sit-ups than The Undertaker, and also are not probably shitty dudes. If you're an Undertaker fan out there, I'm sorry. Everything we've seen about him in the last 10 years or so seems to indicate he might be a real shitty dude. Yay, yay, but let's get back to Mill being cool. I think mm-hmm. I'm probably skipping, but we we probably should. Eventually, the crowd is going wild and crazy and starts cheering for tables. It, yeah, it's very interesting. Sorry, there was a spot recently where uh, I was. I got confused because I think it was one of the AEW shows. One guy in the audience shouts, we want tables. And you could feel the entire arena just turn to him and go, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Let them tell their story. Uh, exactly, because Mills looks at the crowd in his like demonic presence and he's like, mm-hmm. OK, well, We didn't set this as a tables match. There's only one table here, but that's what literally everyone in the crowd wants. He goes to the announce table and just slams Drago on the table. Yeah. And again, this is one of those like, I don't think this could have been. If this was planned, this is amazing. Like if they were like, hey, in case the crowd gets there, we will do it. But. 
A, it seems pretty organic unless there's uh-huh. crowd. I mean, it's a studio show, so there could have been crowd sweetening. That could have been added post. But the fact that Mill seems surprised, mm-hmm. Drago seems Drago seems surprised, Vampiro seems perplexed, and is knocked off commentary for like about thirty seconds. Like they disconnect his microphone and everything. Like they never should have. Leave the goddamn table alone. <laughs> like, you're running a TV show, you know? The crowd warm-up Jimmy Pardo, he comes out before that, and he's like, hey, guys, just, like, in the middle of the match, start screaming for tables. Maybe we'll give it to you. You know what? That's another... I, you were making a great funny guffaw, but that's a great point of why Lucha Underground needed Jimmy Pardo. Because a good warm-up comic could have would have set the table to be like hey let your let your opinions be known but also let these guys tell the story like if you might not need a tie you might not need a tables match Mm -hmm. like that's i don't know i think that i think there's some strength to being like audiences not just in wrestling i think this is art in general art and entertainment a and e you shouldn't know what you want (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> until it's given until you get it mm-hmm. otherwise because that, that's the element of surprise that's the element of like if, if you know what if you know what you want you, like you know you chant for something we want tables we get tables we're satisfied there's still like 15 minutes left in the match you want like, to know what? what like like that's like it doesn't really whereas like if you kind of go into this like i don't know what i want until i get it you you're you're free to be surprised you're free to sort of follow the flow of everything and you're not dictating uh, the match to these guys who should be the ones putting the match together you know yeah because if it was what i really really want every match would just be ziga ziga ah Exactly. And we don't have the copyright clearance for that. Uh uh. (laughs) Absolutely not. Real quick, I tried watching Spice World last night, and maybe I wasn't at the right level of high. It is strange. It scared me, so I had to stop watching. (laughs) I have never seen Spice World, which is crazy because my older sister and my friend's older sister loved Spice World. And I was. Same. The movie was everywhere. Yeah. How did we miss Spice World? I I messaged my sister and said, come over and watch Spice World with us. And she just responded with, damn, that's a great movie. Hell yeah. Real ones? No. All right. Yes. uh, Let's finish up this match. Uh, Yeah. The table spot was iffy. I mean, shouts out for them pulling it on the fly, but it also fucked with production. Uh, So, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, I mean, but Drago was fighting back this whole time. He ends up running up a tur- like out of a out of a waist lock, runs up a turnbuckle to throw a slice spread number two, just like real Matrix style, runs up and backflips mm-hmm, off the turnbuckle. Mm-hmm. We get a ch- an awesome chant. Hey, instead of the we want tables, try a get the coffin chant. <laughs> that was awesome. That was terrible. I was terrified. I was like, holy shit. Could imagine fighting someone and then a crowd of like 200, 300 people are just like, get the coffin. Like, no. I, I, I've left my, I, I need to assert my will. And Drago's been trying to get Mill down. And when he finally mm-hmm. does in like this big, beautiful spot, he's like, yes. I, and Drago's also down. He's like, yeah. yes, I got him. And then just like Mike Myers crawls up and he's like, you see Drago put his hands on his face while he's still laying down. Like, come on, man. Yeah, there is. This is this is one of the shames about like watching too much wrestling uh, and being like, you never want to be too much of a nerd of anything. And you lose beautiful moments like this because you're like, hmm, the Undertaker. No, this was an awesome moment. Drago sold that beautifully. He only gets like two or three escapes. Uh, I feel or like, like not even full counters, just two or three times he manages to escape Mill. Mm-hmm. But then Mill will like sit up and he's like, fuck, man, come on brutal back in the ring after that table spot drago gets his third escape springboard ddt uh he looks for the dragons he looks for the dragon layer pin gets pretty far into the dragon layer pin the the pin combination with the seat belt uh where he hooks the leg uh but mill rolls through and punches the back of drago's head like it owed him money flatliner finishes drago's title dreams at eight minutes 52 seconds. I'll say, 
one, this episode is great for, and I think just they're closing up storylines beautifully right now, but mm. every episode of a thing should make you wanting more of it. Should I think I said that properly. And, and this, doubly so in wrestling. Uh, I feel like, yeah. All this match made me want is for these two fuckers to team up. I think a tag team of Drago and Mill would be an unstoppable duo in both aesthetics, in fandom, and skill. Like, you mm. couldn't get past these two if they were teaming up. And they both have, like, Vampiro puts it over a lot. They both come from the Inferno. Mm -hmm. They both have their source of power is something dark and underworldly. Like, you could, you could, you could, that's a buddy cop movie. Uh-huh. That's a buddy cop movie. And if they need a trios, hey, who has the most dark energy surrounding them? Well, Matt it, Stryker. No, it's Chavo because he has like literal <laughs> dark shit around him. Because guys, <laughs> they have stool in their diarrhea. That if you look at a wrestler's feces, it is just <laughs> Which black we do. muck. We have to. We're always seeing Chavo going through <laughs> airport security, getting snapped with TMZ. And they're like, why is his this? It was red when he went and now it's just pitch black. Oh, I don't. James, get us out of this. Transition us into the plugs. I oh. beg of you. Speaking of diarrhea, well, if you want some more <laughs> diarrhea from our mouths, check us out. Goose Von Kaiser on Twitch. Is that what it still is? Or Goose VK? Yeah. No, I'm back to Von Kaiser, baby. From Wowzers. the Kaiser. Come on, man. Making Suck me have to dick. change things. And yeah. hey, hey, follow Marshland <laughs> Monster wherever music is found. Please, I have a nine track single coming out in October called Anal Dentata. But why, hey, it's a single with nine tracks. I have so many remixes on it. It's so good. Sean, I'll send you links to them. Oh, man. Yeah. It's going to be great. Find my other podcast, Marshland Media. Uh, just go to MLMPod.com and head over to Patreon.com forward slash MLMPod. That's the best way to support us. Or also give us a five-star iTunes review or a five-star rating on Spotify. Those help us, guys, for real. And it will take you, I don't know, three minutes to do tops if you really want to do a review on Apple iPod stuff. But... Please. Patreon.com forward slash MLM pod. $5 a month gets you exclusive content every single Friday. This week, we are, I think, closing out Death From Above, a Sam and Max podcast where I'm discuss. Oh, wait, no, we still have to do the comic book, which will okay. be Nicole next month. But we'll, we'll be discussing Sam and Max Hit the Road, the PC game. I'm very excited. Jose, I believe, is the guest. But if he doesn't show up, it'll just be me. And I spent truly probably hundreds of hours playing this game as a child. We played it, never beat it. We had the hint book. No, no one was like, maybe this book we should read in order instead of just looking at the comics <laughs> in it. But uh, please. How, were the, how good were those comics? Oh, fantastic. I, I think Sam and Max, Sam and Max defined my sense of humor and every, literally everyone who has been on that show that watched the cartoon with me is like, we understand you more now, James. After appearing and watching it and discussing with you, I understand you more, but the rest of the world less. <laughs> it's so good, guys. Please check that out. But if you're a $10 patron, you get all of that content plus monthly content. Last month, we did Uncle Sam watch along, Lil Cory and I, and I think we're doing a Should This Exist discussing a Lucas Arts. I think it's called The Defenders of Earth or something along those lines. I forget what the exact title oh. of it. It's it's a weird title. It was a video game. They wanted it to be a comic book. It was, but it falls in line because it, the pilot of it aired on Fox Kids and the comic was written by Steve Purcell, who created Sam, Sam and, Max. and Max. Yes. So Lucas I think- Arts. Because Sam and Max was LucasArts, right? Yes, but I think because of that relationship, that's how Sam and Max Freelance Police the Cartoon ended up being a thing on, what's it called, uh, on Fox was Kids. It? That's, wow, 
Wow, that's messy. That's messy in the most fascinating way. Which Damn. Fox Kids was said to be like, oh, we don't, we never had intentions of picking this pilot up because it was too expensive to make. So they probably were like, well, what about Sam and Max? That's cheaper. And they're like, yeah. And then after one season, they're like, okay, you guys, uh, it was in, <laughs> it was technically in quotes cheaper, but not by much. Why did you have to do new backgrounds and a different world for every single episode? Because animation has come off a long way and we're, t listen, man, animators got to make their money while they can before the AI rips it away from all of us. Mm -hmm. It was one of the first television shows to be fully colored, via, like digital coloring. And it really, I don't, maybe it's because I'm a 90s kid. So like things that look in that 90s aesthetic is very pleasing to me. Underrated, under not just the writing, because we talked a lot about the writing, visually yeah. stunning. So fun to look at. If you want to hear us talk about more of it, go over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod. That's a $5, but $10 patrons also get shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those starting with Steve F. Get the coffin. Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour. Did you I'm say not going to do the claps. Okay. I try to do the claps, but I don't think it picked up in the microphone. It picked up in your microphone, not in mine. So I was just waiting. Alex Z, the was. <laughs> Get the coffin. Orion, he's Defo. Get the coffin. I was expecting hyphen O. Sorry. Jordan B, the chaos witch. Get the coffin. Joshua, my bickle brother in common law. Get the coffin. Steve Barnes, he's going to be doing one of those remixes. Get the coffin. My mother. Get my... Bottle. Lil Corey's BFF and now former roommate Shane. Get the coffin. Or former coffin. That fed. Get the, get the coffin. Get that coffin, you should have said. Core winning ah. at twitch.tv forward slash core winning. Get the coffining. Or, or I would have said get the forward slash coffin. Fuck. God damn it. Twitch.tv forward slash coffin. Uh, pull it together, Goose. Pull it together. And you got hey, this. From the Close rom drunk. complex and formulaic a podcast and script writing it's twitch.tv forward slash r2 shelby 2 it's r2 shelby 2 all right just gotta close strong something really clever something okay you got this one ready here we go three two get the coffin i've been james <laughs> i'm sean and this has been sweaty, sweaty time, time pro, pro wrestling, wrestling. Bye, bye bye Oh, hey, hey, hey.